Hoffman coding problem which may take some time so we will move on to the uh, next problem and then next class will do the Hoffman coding problem all right so this problem is what is the problem of activity selection and you might have come across this even if in every day when you do things so you have a list of activities and the start time you know from morning to evening or night what are the list of activities you have to do and when can you start those activities and then what is the time it takes to finish those activities so if you start this activity one at time one unit it takes you you, have, you can finish at time three and activity two if you start at time one you, it, you can finish at time eight and so on so these are called the start and finish time of those activities so now what you want to do is pick the largest possible set of activities uh, such that they are not overlapping with each other so what i mean by overlapping with each other so like these are the four activities that do not overlap with each other because activity one starts at time one finishes at time three activity four starts at time four and finishes at time seven you see there's no overlap the start time of any activity doesn't fall within the uh, any other activity okay and finishes at time 7 so activity 6 starts at time 8 and is ending finishing at time 10 so it doesn't overlap with anything else so this is a set of non overlapping activities so what we want to find is the uh, set that has the largest such possible number of non overlapping activities and in this case the size is 4 and we'll go through this algorithm and after that we'll find out that uh, we can have 4 non overlapping activities for this data set okay or this combination so again it's a combinatorial problem what combination of activities you will pick such that you have the largest possible set of non overlapping activities okay so we want to do a greedy strategy so it's not going to be very complicated uh, as a strategy uh, it's a very common sense what would you do that's what we that's what the greedy means uh, uh, again uh, you look at locally so even in the previous problem we have seen here we look at very local okay among all the items what is item the for every pound of the item i get the largest value that's kind of uh, very uh, localized approach and you see that that localized approach gives you the optimal solution even the coin denomination for whatever the cent values i try to pick up as many 25 cent cents as possible so that's uh, you're, you're only focusing on 25 cents and then uh, going to the next largest coin value you can pick up and, but that's guaranteeing you the optimal solution in this problem same thing here so picking just the value item with the largest value per pound you're not looking at all the uh, other items just be going with the largest item with the largest value per pound so like that here uh, as a greedy strategy we will again we want to pick as many activities as possible okay so the strategy is this um, select the activity that will have the smallest finish time so if you select such an activity we are anticipating that it will lead us to uh, a set of largest largest set of non overlapping activities okay so for that the first step is to sort these activities because you see some activity the activities are not listed in the increasing order of finish times it's like 3, 8, then 5, 7 and so on. So you want to pick the activities based on the finish times and prefer activities that finish earlier. Okay? Because we think that if you finish pick up an activity that finishes earlier, you may pick some more activities such that there's no overlap. Okay, that's the greedy strategy. So your first step is to sort all the activities based on, on the finish times. So activity 1 finishes at time 3 then activity 3 finishes at time 5 uh, activity 4 finishes at time 7 and so on so you have to correspondingly write down the activity ID and the start times so you should not mix up things so the same numbers should be there 
activity 1 starts at time 1 and 3, activity 3 starts at time 2 and, and finishes at 5, activity 4 starts at time 4 and finishes at time 7 and so on. So make sure you do that, okay. Then uh, just go with the activities based on the finish time. So we'll pick the activity that finishes earliest which is activity 1 that finishes at time 3. So it starts at time 1 and ends at time 3. So that means um, you cannot pick anything in any activity whose times are in between. For example, you cannot pick activity 3 that starts at time 2 and finishes at time 5 because the starting time 2 is within this range of 1 to 3. So you kind of cancel out or discard those uh, that activity 3. Then activity 4, the next activity that finishes the earliest is end starting at five, time 4 ending at time 7 and so far you have picked up only activity 1 so the start time of 4 does not overlap with the end time of, so it has to be greater than the finishing time so you cannot pick an activity that starts at time 3 because that considers, considers an overlap so you have to have starting time of the next activity that you have to pick up to be greater than the finishing time of your previous activity that, that you have picked up ok so you have to make sure that so 4 is greater than 3 so it doesn't overlap with uh, one set of picks so far so you can pick activity 4 so then you cannot pick activity 2 because it starts at time 1 which of course overlaps with A1 and goes up to time 8 so it will overlap with both these activities so you discard that time activity 5 is starting at time 5 so there's an overlap now activity 6 starts at time 8 it doesn't overlap with what you have picked so far so you can pick activity 6 that starts at time 8 finishes at time 10 and then you cannot pick activity 7 because it starts at time 9 that's an overlap here with activity 6 now you can pick activity 8 it starts at time 11 greater than 10 so you can pick activity 8 and uh, that goes until time 14 so you cannot pick activity 10 it overlaps with 8 uh, the start time 13 is within this range and uh, activity 9 starts at time 12 which is also in this range. So those are the four activities you could pick up and that's the optimal solution uh, means uh, the, uh, activities with the largest number of uh, the largest number of activities that do not overlap so the four such activities. Now is it the only combination we can pick up? The answer probably not. You could try some other combination of activities that will also be four such activities that do not overlap but up by applying the strategy of picking activities with the earliest finish time this is what we will end up with now what as a theorem as a property we want to prove and with that we'll stop is um, that this is the property for this algorithm at least one maximal non overlapping schedule of activities will include the activity that finishes first so as I said, um, our strategy is to pick the activities based on the finish time. So we naturally will end up picking the activity that finishes first, right, as part of our solution, like in this case we picked A1. Now that may not be all uh, the only combination of activities. If someone else could come up with some other combination of activities that would also be four for this example, for this data set, and that may not include A1. So that is okay as a solution, but what we want to prove is among all such possible solutions, at least one solution should have the activity that finishes first uh, as part of it. So you want to prove that as the property. So how would we prove that is uh, by using proof by contradiction. So let us assume among all the solu so active solutions that we have, uh, none of those solutions will have our earliest finishing activity as part of it. So uh, let us assume that. Okay. Uh, so what we can then do is, among all the solutions we have, we'll pick one solution. So let us say we have, let us call that schedule, means a set of activities as X. And it starts with some activity, say V, and then some other activities that are picked up. Okay, some other activities that are picked up. Uh, so our activity, let us say it is U. 
so let u be the activity with the earliest finish time and we are assuming among all such solutions that are out there uh, u is not part of those solutions and you want to prove that this is uh, not possible u should be part of at least some solution okay now so let us pick one such solution that it does not involve u it involves it starts with some activity v and then some other activities uh, so since u is the one that finishes earlier the finish time of u should be less than the finish time of some other activity v right because that first activity in the set v the finish time of u should be less than the finish time of v because u is the one that finishes the earliest so think about something like this uh, again these are non overlapping activities so that means um, v should start at some time and finish at some time so if you want to work with numbers let us say v starts at some time 1 and finishes at, at time 5 then x should start at time say 6 or even 7 should not overlap with v that's what it is so it should be at 10 then y can start at say 12 and go up to 14 and z can start from say 15 and go up to 18 and something like that so the key thing is this the finish time of u which was not picked up for the solution should be less than the finish time of v because by our assumption u is one that finishes the earliest so we can replace u uh, v with u so u will let us say start at time 1 and finish sometime before v okay so by doing this we are not affecting the non overlapping property of the solution everything else will be still okay since the finish time of u is less than the finish time of v instead of v if you include u as part of the solution it's not going to affect the non overlapping property of the solution if it's not going to affect the non overlapping part of the solution then we could have we could call this as the non overlapping schedule of activities and maximum number for such activities okay same as this the number 4 we got here so that's the proof it's a contradiction so what we assumed is u the early activity that finishes earliest is is not part of any of such non maximal non overlapping schedules but what we ended up proving is it is possible to include u as part of at least one such maximal non overlapping schedules and make it still non overlapping so that's a contradiction to our assumption okay so that's a kind of proof Okay, so it's very easy to look at. Uh, just write down some numbers like this, and uh, you know, you can visualize things, and then you can understand the proof quite easily. Okay, any question? Yes, I have a question. Yes. It's about power, though. Okay. Okay, we can discuss after the class. Okay. All right. Okay, any other question on the topics we have seen or even in homework if you have uh, I can open a zoom session so you can meet me after that so doing the zoom time okay we are out of time for the regular class um, but feel free to email me or uh, if you have any questions or I'm opening a zoom session after the class we can discuss there okay let me see